All right, I wanted to tell you all a little story about a fella. This fella's a farmer. He lives down, well, not too far from here, down in eastern Kentucky. And he's lived there all his life. And, you know, he's gotten into a little bit of a routine. And every morning, it's sort of the same thing. He comes downstairs, and he sits down there at his kitchen table. And he does the same thing every morning. He sits there, and he drinks his coffee, and he reads his newspaper. Now, on this one particular morning, and I believe, I believe he was about halfway through his second cup of coffee because... I'm pretty sure he was about halfway through the second section of the newspaper. Well, he's sitting there at the, at the kitchen table and he hears this sound from the back room of the farmhouse. He hears this. Well, he knows what that is. Although I would say none of you do. <laughs> well, that's the sound of a mouse being caught in a mouse trap. You see, this fellow's lived on farms all his life. And he knows if you live on a farm, well, you probably have some mice, and it just sort of goes with the territory, you know? Now, it didn't really bother him too much until, well, they started getting into his cornflakes, and he didn't have anything for breakfast, and at that point, he decided that the mice were a bit of a problem. He had to do something about it. And so the first thing he did, he went out and he got himself a... He got a cat, right. And that worked pretty good for a while. You see, it kept the mouse population down to a manageable level, and... Everybody was pretty happy there for a while, but, well, now that cat was getting a little bit older and a little lazier, and, well, they started feeding the cat table scraps, so it didn't really feel like catching mice anymore. So now he had to resort to mouse traps. Well, now, on this particular day, the guy knew that, well, that was his last mouse trap. But he also knew it was not his last mouse, you see, so he decided that he had a job for the day, and that was going to be to go down to the store and get some more mouse traps. So he finished up his breakfast there. Of course, he had to take care of his chores before he could do anything else. So he had to go out and milk the... <coughs> milk the cow. And he came back in the house and he told his wife, he said, you know, I've got to go down to the store. I need to get some mouse traps today. And uh, so he walked out the front door of the farmhouse and he walked down the walkway. Now he's walking down that walkway and just as he got to his old truck, he... Oh boy. He turned around and he walked back up to the farmhouse and... We well, knocked on the door of the farmhouse. Now, his wife had kind of come to expect this, you see. He's getting a mite forgetful in his age, and I don't know if you know anybody like this, but she was ready for him, so she opened that door and she handed him his keys. You see, he had walked out without his keys again. Now, I personally don't know anybody who's that forgetful, but I've heard stories of people like that. Now, this time he was walking down the walkway, and he looked over at his neighbor's yard, and out in his neighbor's yard was his neighbor, and he was out there, and he was... That's right, he was chopping wood out there. So he knew it was going to be a long, cold winter. I wanted to make sure he had plenty of wood to keep him warm through the winter. And he looked up at his neighbor's porch, and there up on the porch, yeah, that was his neighbor's wife in the rocking chair up there on the porch of their house. So he waved howdy to his neighbors, and he got in his old truck, and he put the key in the ignition, he put his foot on the gas pedal, and he turned the key in. Nothing happened. <laughs> so he, uh, he patted the accelerator a couple times. Sometimes that helps get, get the gas moving in the fuel line. You know, it helps a little bit. So he patted on that. And he turned the key again. Well, you know, it is an old truck, and it is a cold morning. And it doesn't always start right the first time, or I guess even the second time. But he knows once he gets it going, it'll, be, it'll run just fine. It's just a matter of getting it started. So he turns the key the third time. There we go. Now she's running like a top. So she ba he backs down the driveway. He puts it in gear and he heads up the road. Well, he's picking up speed there and he goes around the bend by his neighbor's place there. He hears this. Well, that's his neighbor's dog chasing him up the road. You know, he gets about a mile down the road. You know, there's one traffic light in this whole part of the county. And, of course, it's got to turn red just as he gets to it. So he steps on the brake there. And he's sitting there at the traffic light. And he's just kind of daydreaming. He looks back over his shoulder. 
Well, you never know who you're gonna see walking down the road this time of day, do you? And then, and that's the fellow behind him honking his horn because the lights turn green. He's not paying attention to it. Well, he's picking up speed there and he heads up onto the highway and he's just cruising down that highway. He's kind of minding his own business. And that's when he hears the. Well, he looks in his rearview mirror and sure enough, right behind him, he sees a police car. So he pulls over to the, to the right lane, but that police car speeds on past him. I guess he was after somebody else this time, but should keep an eye on that speedometer, you know. Well, folks, I'd like to make a long story short here, but, oh, never mind, too late for that. He did get to the store and he got his mouse traps. Now, it was when he was coming back from the, the store with those mouse traps, and that's when he ran into the... Train crossing, that's right. And so he's got to stop at the train crossing, wait for the train to come. And he looks way down the track. You can see that train coming way down in the distance. And as the train gets closer and closer, he realizes this is not just any ordinary train. No, it's the Orange Blossom Special. It's the most famous train fiddle tune ever written. 